Amen. Amen. You know I love worship. But let me tell you something. We don't want to miss the little pieces of the song. What I heard was a message in the, from the writer that it is our desire to be filled up first. And listen to what happens after you're filled up. You start to look like him. And once you start looking like him, there's a response. He's glorified. That should be a prayer from all of us to first of all want to be filled with his spirit. Once we're filled with his spirit, we start to look and do things that look like God. And then he'll be glorified. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Welcome to May. Welcome to May. Praise God. This is Women's Emphasis Month. So all the ladies, if you're here, let me know you're here. Every year at One Church ATL, we emphasize our women. And uh, today we are going to start the month on fire. Hallelujah. And so without further ado, our first minister, let me tell you something about One Church ATL. If anybody tells me a woman can't bring forth the word, they are a liar. And so in this church, we're going to honor our women this morning. You're going to be uh, blessed today by no other than uh, Miss Nicole Barnell. If you just come up. Come give us what the Lord gave me. Bless the Lord in this house. Oh, bless the Lord, oh my soul. And all that is within me, I will bless his holy name. I said I will bless the Lord, oh my soul. And all that is within me, I will bless his name. I said bless the Lord, oh my soul. And all that is within me, I will bless his name. I said bless the Lord. his name. I will bless his name. I will bless his name. Oh, bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. And all that is within me. And all that is within me. I will bless his name. I will bless his name. Oh, let everything that have breath. Praise ye the Lord. Let everything that have breath. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. He said, praise him in the sanctuary. Praise him with the tambourine. Praise him with your voice. Praise him with your hands. Praise him with your feet. Praise him with your mouth. I will bless the Lord on my soul. I will bless the Lord on my soul. I will bless the Lord on my soul. I will bless his name. I will. Bless his name, bless his name, bless his name. Oh God, let your glory fill the temple. Let your glory fill the temple. Let your glory fill this temple. Hey, call you. Let your glory fill this temple, God. Let your glory fill this house. Let your glory go from the front to the back. Let your glory rest on your people today, oh God. Let your glory rest in this house, oh God. Move how you want to move. Move, Holy Spirit. Move how you want to move. Move me out of the way. I give you my best of the play. I lay myself before you, oh God. Do what you want to do in your people. Do what you want to do in this house. Do what you want to do in my body. Do what you want to do, oh God, in this season. I will bless your name. Oh, give them glory. Give him glory. Give him access. Give him glory. 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 In this place. In this place. In this place. In this place, in this place, we give you glory. In this house, in this hour, in this season, we give you glory. 
glory. Oh God, we bless you. Oh God, we worship you in this place. Oh, in this place. Oh, in this place. No matter what season you're in, give them glory. No matter what season you're in, give them glory. No matter what season you're in, give them glory. In this house, give them glory. Oh, let your glory fill this place. Let your train of glory fill this tabernacle. Let your glory fill this house. Holy Spirit, it is yours. None of me and all of you. I can't do it without you, Father. I can't open up my mouth without you, God. I'm weak without you. But where I'm weak, you're made strong. I can't move without you. Because it is in you I have my being. It is in you that I move, oh God. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord, the creator of the heavens and the earth. Give him glory in this house. 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 He is the living savior. To everything there is a season. We in Ecclesiastics, to everything there is a season. Everything there is a time. Everything there is a purpose. God is already in the building. Everything there is a time. Everything there is a purpose. God is already here. He met you here. You brought him with you. Everything there is a season. Everything under the heavens there is purpose. There is a season. Ecclesiastics 3 and 1 tells us there is a season. Discern the season that you're in. Discern the season that you're in. One church, ATL. In every thing, there is a season. In every time, for every purpose, under the sun, there is a season. There is a season. If you don't know your time, you're going to miss what God has to say. If you don't know what to do in your season, you done missed it. If life is measured in time, then when you waste time, you waste life. In everything, there is a season. Come on in the Holy Ghost. A time for every purpose under heaven. If you don't know what season you're in, you don't know what to do. If life is measured in terms of time, then you waste time. You're wasting your life. Time without purpose is life without meaning. Time without purpose is life without meaning. We measure this time on earth as a brief sojourner through the land. It's not about how many years you're here, but about what you do in the season of your life. You miss it, you miss God, you miss the purpose, you wasted your life. Ecclesiastics 3 and 1 tells us, I will not be here long. The Lord is already here. Time without purpose. Because in everything there is a season. Say season. Everything there is a season. A time for every purpose under the earth. Time without purpose is life without meaning. Time on earth without purpose is time without meaning. Why did God create time? God created time that he might put man in it. He don't live in time. We do. God does not live in time. We live in time. In everything there is a season, a time 
for every purpose under the earth. Time is simply a brief interruption of eternity with measure. Time where we live is a brief interruption of eternity with measure in the earth. God does not live in time. We live in time. What are you doing with your time? Discern your seasons. God doesn't live in time. That's why he can see the ending in the beginning. Because he's alpha and he's omega. Time. Discern the season that you're living in. You do not have time to waste. The Lord is not going to say, well done. Well done, good and faithful servant. When you haven't done anything. Done. We live in time. Well done, good and faithful servant. What did you do with your time? He's not going to say you lived 97 good years. You might live 24 years on the earth, but you did something with your time. What are you doing with it? Discern the season that you're in. There is a season in time. You're in a season. You can be in many seasons at one time. You can be in multiple seasons in different facets of your life. Because we are moving through time. There is a season to everything. Everything. There is a season. Everything. There is a season. Everything. There is a season to everything. There is a season. Why? Because God created time for purpose. A time for every purpose under the sun. Ecclesiastes 3 and 1. We're in time. Why are we in time? We are in time for purpose. We have to move in time. When we look at the word season, in Hebrew it's a nah. It means due season. It's a period in time. We're on the time clock in the earth. God is not in time. We are. So what are you doing with your time in your season of life? And as we look at seasons, we all understand winter, spring, summer, fall. And to every winter, spring, summer, fall, there is a season in our spiritual life. The seasons divide us by particular patterns. The weather changes. As we look at the natural seasons, the weather may change. <clears throat> we change our clothing. We're adjusting to that season. We're adjusting to that season. We're adjusting to that season. Regardless, the sun is moving. The earth is moving. The earth will shift as the seasons will shift. The climate will change. In, in America, we're looking at time. We're looking at seasons. When we're looking at seasons, we may categorize it by sports. Football season. Soccer season. Baseball season. We're in a season. When most of us married folks probably legally separate during football season. <laughs> it's a joke. That's a joke. <laughs> I didn't realize <clears throat> how serious football was until I was dating my husband. And we stopped and traveled, got off the road to watch a football game. The whole football game. The entire football game coming from Mississippi, we were dating. And I was like, we really about to watch a whole football game. We did. We went to the Dallas Cowboy game in Dallas, Texas, and we were actually in the Dallas world and football, Cowboy Nation, and my husband wanted to go down the street and watch a football game, and here we are at the, the stadium right there, but we want to go watch a football game. We watched the whole football game. Time of the year 
we can look at time where in North America, we look at timing by a season on television. That series of certain events may come on TV. That is a timing. That is timing. A time of the year when food and vegetables are plentiful, they are in season. Understand that we have to adjust in season. We're adjusting when we are in season. So women, I want to encourage you today, brothers, listen in as well, because this is for you too. We are seasonal beings. We are all seasonal beings. Our lives are forever changing. We're not always going to be the same, in the same spot at the same time. We're not going to always be changing diapers and, and moving here and moving there. We're not going to always be in the, the, the carpool or the PTO meetings, or you might be graduating a child from kindergarten or from college, but the season will change. Say, the season will change. The season will change. Nothing in life is guaranteed but God and his promises. Seasons will change. So I wanted to encourage my sisters today that your season will change. We're not just in this season of, of constantly working or you're working two. I remember working two jobs and going to college at night and I had two children at that time. That season have changed. I can remember being a single mother for a very long time. That season has changed. I'm now married. That season have changed. The season changed when I was studying and going to school from 8 to 5, working 8 to 5, and then interning from 5.30 to 11.30. That season has changed. We burn in two ends of the candle. That season have changed. You might be working one job and in grad school. That season is due to change. You, you might have sickness in your body. That season is due to change. You will not be in that season for a long period of time. That season will change. Nothing is guaranteed in life but God and his promises. Nothing in life is guaranteed but the word of the Lord and his promises. That season will change. I guarantee you it will. Everything has a season. Everything has a season. Change is guaranteed to happen. Nothing remains the same. Seasons are always moving. So when in the winter months, you put away your summer clothes, don't throw them away because you're going to need them again because summer is soon to return. You're going to need that swimming suit when you get ready to go on your cross-country tour. You're going to need those winter clothes and those fur minks when it gets cold outside if you're living up north. We might need a sweatshirt or a hoodie down here, but the season is due to change. Say, the season will change. Seasons will change. Nothing is permanent but God and his promises. Say that with me. Nothing is permanent but God and his his promises. Seasons are due to change. They're temporary. Seasons are temporary. This gives us an incentive to look to our future. The best time to shop for summer clothing is when? Come on now, y'all good shoppers. It's in? Okay, I hear you. Somebody know how to manage that money right. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. That's right. You shop out of season for the best bargains. You're shopping out of season because you know what? That out of season giving you an incentive that that future season is soon to come. It's soon to come. Seasons will change. Seasons will change. Don't waste your time. Don't waste your time because your season is soon to change. The season is soon to change. So it's very important for us to understand what season you're in. I'm in a few right now. Just started a new job two weeks ago, and it's a whole lot. It's a whole lot. But I had seasons where I had to prepare for the elevation. I had to prepare for the elevation. I had to prepare for the elevation. It's a whole lot. It's a lot of mental. So, I'm in, so in my professional life, I'm in a season of growth. In my Ministry life, I'm in a season of growth at One Church Atlanta. This is a stretch to get up here and teach all of y'all solidified, bona fide, Bible reading folks. Lord have mercy, I'm sweating under, up underneath this sweater. Because I know y'all read y'all word. That means I better be up here reading mine, and I'm here teaching. Amen. I know y'all on the dig at Bible study on Wednesdays. Glory be to God. We got some of the best teachers up in here that teaches us. Give them a hand clap for praise. I bless God for Pastor Rod and Pastor Bell who do this uh, often and for their wives who labor with them. This is, this is a lot to be up here. I'm going to tell you, Lord have mercy. Jesus Christ. Seasons are due to change. 
Lord have mercy. Understand that there is a corresponding season for the natural, for our faith walk. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. We do not have time to waste. We have to discover God and fulfill the purpose in the time frame that we have here on this earth. Somebody's life might be cut short at 30. That might be their long life. 29 might be 97 to them. Come on now. We take life for granted. We think we're going to get to three scores. All of us might not make it that far. We have a time clock that's ticking because why? We live in time. We're living in time. God is not living in time. We are. So our clock is ticking. Now, what are you doing with your time? What are you doing with the season that you're in? Because there's many seasons of a life of a woman, many seasons of a life of a saint, many seasons of us here in the earth. Does that make sense? Can I get an amen? amen. Jesus. Jesus. God want us to know what we did with the time he allocated for us. Like I said, a lot of us might not make it to 97. Some might not even make it to 15. I got a call from my sister two nights ago that a seven-month-old got shot in the drive-by. She was seven months old. Seven months old. Her time was already ended. She ain't make it to 20. She ain't even make it to 10. What you doing with your time, brothers and sisters? Because seasons change. So identify the season that you're in. I took a look over at Esther. And I'm, I'm telling you, I'm going to wrap this up. I took a look over at Esther. And I understood in, in, in Esther's story, she was in different seasons of her life. She was in different seasons of her life. We understand in the natural, we have winter, spring, summer, and fall. So when looking at, at, at Esther's life, she had a, a, a season of seed and planting. I'm going to call that spring. She had to prepare to be the queen of, a, of the king of Persia. She had to prepare. There was a season. First of all, she had to answer the call to God to even want to be the queen. She had to answer the call. So have you answered the call? Did God tell you to start a business? Did he tell you to write a book? You know, that, that's always the running line. I started and I put it down because God said, I didn't tell you to do that right now. Because I was going with the culture. All my friends was writing a book and I was starting mine. He said, no, your book's still being written. Put that up. You got something else to do. So understand the season that you're in because your sister season might not look like your season. Your spring might not look like her spring. So don't compare yourself to what she's doing because you don't know what labor is going into what she's doing right now. You don't know what it takes to walk through that grad school. You don't know what it took to have to start a nonprofit or have to raise five kids by yourself. That's a season that two will pass. But Esther had a season. I'm going to call her spring season, seed season. Okay, and we understand, we understand the analogy of the farmers. Now, we have, in, in, my, in my, one of my jobs, we had a garden, 24 raised garden bed. I knew nothing about the garden, but I had to learn. They had me out there digging and weeding and all kind of stuff. I'm like, Lord, this kills your back. But it was so rewarding to watch what was growing and what you put your hands to. And I'm like, wow, I did not know zucchini and squash started off as a flower. I'm a, I'm, I am a, it's country, a, a city girl. I'm, I'm being... I'm a transplant to the country. So those zucchini and those squash started off as flowers. And it was so cool to watch that. But in the seed season, you have to answer the call. Esther had to answer a higher calling for her as a Jew to become queen of Persia. So that was the seed season for her. She had to decide, okay, is this is what I want to do? She had to implant that word of God down in her. And all through the book of Esther, God was never mentioned at all. He had to put that word down on the inside of her, so she had to understand, okay, this is a seed season for me. And in this season, I had to say yes to God. I told God last year or this year, I had put a declaration in my office at home, and I just began to declare some things over my life. They are now, I do see some coming to pass. Some are not all of them, but some are starting to move. Glory be to God. Thank you. But I said, Lord, I'm going to go ahead and get this seed of this yes down in me because I was the rebellious one. I was one. I'm a, I am I mean, running from God. Like, I don't want to do that, this or the other. But God was like, okay. Will not get off your heels. 
in that seed season, that spring season. So that was a season where she said yes to God. What haven't you said yes to yet? You come here every Sunday, day in and day out. I know God speaking to you up in here because he's speaking to me when I'm in here every Sunday. Even the Sundays I ain't here, I'm trying to log on, trying to hear what God is saying. Because this is where I serve. This is where my tithes come. This is where I'm being taught. Lord, what you speak into the house. There is many of us in here who have not said yes yet. Why? I do not know. You know. Many of us haven't said yes. Many of us running from the call on our life. Many of us running. We've been in rebellion because we don't want to do what God wants us to do. Why? Because it's uncomfortable. Because you're scared. I'd be scared too. Because you're nervous, because you feel like you're unqualified. I've, I've checked all them boxes. What are, you, what are you afraid of? Time is moving. Why haven't you said yes yet? Answer that to yourself. Don't tell me, tell yourself. That's between you and God. There is a yes he's waiting on. There's a seed of righteousness on the inside of you, and God is waiting on your yes. It's the spring season. He's waiting on your yes. Is it yes for you to step up here in ministry. Y'all see those children back there. They always need some help. We send our kids back there, but we ain't going back there to help them. I'm one of those mothers. I'm back there with them too. I want to know what you're teaching my babies. Why are you coming here day in and day out and we ain't doing nothing? He's waiting on your yes. Seed season. Many of us been pricked to go back to school. Finish your education. He's waiting on your yes. There's a commitment to the call. There's a commitment that follows that yes. So Lord, yes, I don't know what it is. It's uncomfortable to me. And sometimes it is a lonely place. But God, I'm saying yes because what you're saying is greater than what I got to walk through. He's waiting on your yes and your seed season. He's waiting on your yes. He's waiting on you to step out in faith. He's gave you the business idea. You don't wrote it down two and three and four and five times. It's in four and five books, and you still ain't did nothing with it. What you waiting on? You're still in your spring season. He's waiting on your yes. Esther said yes. She went to that pageant. She got, when y'all get time, read it. She got herself together. In the next season, it was a season of growth. I'm going to call that the summer season. That's the corresponding season. It was a summer season. It was a season where she had to learn. She got in the palace. She went through the pageant. She said yes to God. She got selected. She went on in there. The most beautiful one. And guess what? She was a Jew. So we understand you have a past. God knows that. He knows that. He understands that you, that, you, that you disqualified yourself a lot of times, that we disqualify ourselves a lot of times. He understands that. But in that spring season, he said, give me your yes, and then you're going to move to that growth season. That's the season of summer. That's where you're going to learn, okay? You got a business plan. Or you said, yes, okay, God, I'm going to start this business. So now what you got to do? You got to buy you some books. You got to learn about that business. You got to grow. You got to prepare yourself. Or if you're going to grow in your, uh, your other endeavors or you want to be a wife. Okay, God, this is my season to learn how to cook some greens, macaroni and cheese and chicken. Ain't that the black people food? <laughs> you know, if you could cook some greens, boy, you done made it. That's like a rites of passage in our community. How are your greens tasting? Yeah. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I, you know, and then we have to learn how not to put the fat back in the hog market so we can live a little while longer to the next season. In that growth season, that's the summer season, season of learning, of service, of preparation, hard work, grinding, contentment, you're watering, you're puning, pruning, excuse me. So somebody, who know about that, that summer season? Who know about that season of growth? Who know about that? Well, you probably writing five papers in one weekend. Who know about that? Where you getting up, and I had two babies in diapers. I said, Lord, ooh, you teaching me about time management. I asked you for it. I learned how to take a shower in five minutes. I had to get two kids and car seats. Oh, I couldn't wait till that season was over. And diapers. Diapers were expensive. Lord, have mercy. And I didn't have a, and it was a 13-year period before I had more kids. And when I added those two more kids, and they was in diapers at the same time. 
Lord have mercy, Jesus, on my soul. I ain't getting no wind, getting no sleep. Deshaun was moving the baby bed down the hall. I said, we were taking a whole bed. He said, they're getting out of here. <laughs> he, took my, he took my baby and took the whole bed and pushed him down the hall. I said, where you going with my baby? He said, hey, we got to go to sleep. Isaiah still get up early. It was Isaiah. He was moving them. And we were in that season of, of learning and preparing, right? So don't get discouraged when you're in that discern your season. Amen? Can I get an amen right there? Discern your season. Understand what season you in. So if you're in grad school or you got them two babies in diapers, understand that season is due to change. Because soon that baby going to be, them children going to be graduating and going on to adulting. Glory. Mm-hmm. What I appreciated about Esther, what I appreciated about Esther, what I gleaned from Esther in that summer season of growth, she was also being mentored by her uncle Melanie, Mordecai. So in that growth season, it's all right to be mentored because we don't know everything. Okay, so I just started a nonprofit. I was going to serve other nonprofits before I even had mine off the ground. My husband said, you going all the way over there all day? And the Lord would like, the Lord would just go serve. And what I was doing, I was learning up under somebody else's leadership. I was looking at other ministries and looking at other girl nonprofits to see how it ran. Because guess what? I never done that before, but I gave God a yes in my spring season. So when I gave him my yes, then he put me in this summer season of growth. And I had to prepare so that's when I had to learn and go and gleam and serve. Esther served in the palace. She had to learn the protocol of how, to, how it works in the palace. Because it came a time where she was going to have to address the king. Now you couldn't go to the king any other kind of way in that, in that time because she, she can lose her life. Right? So she had to learn. In that season, she had to learn, she had to prepare, she was mentored with her uncle Mordecai. So in this season of summer, discern your season, learn what season you're in. Because if you ain't doing nothing in this season, don't expect to get no harvest. If you're not preparing in this season over here in your summer season, how do you get a harvest over here? That makes sense? Can I get an amen right there? You can't. You won't have nothing to harvest because you have no seed. In the ground. No seed. Amen. But that was the time when Esther was learning the ways of the king. She was preparing. She was seeking God. She was fasting. She was speaking with her uncle Mordecai. He was giving her instructions on how to move. She submitted to her season. Rest on that real quick. She submitted. She submitted to the season she was in. That ain't always easy to do. When I had them two kids in them diapers, and I was living my fancy single life, and I was like, Lord, I want a husband. You better ask him to make you a wife before he send him. It ain't no joke. I love my husband. But, it's a, but don't don't abort that season of preparation to have that companionship. Don't abort that season of preparation to have that companionship. Because there's so much to go into ministering to that man or ministering to that woman. Ask God to make you the man that she needs, the covering that she needs. Ask God to make you the woman that he needs. To speak the language that he needs to speak that he will respond to. Glory be to God. So in that growth season, that was that season of mentoring. Yes, sir. We had to learn how to mentor like I, like I had mentioned to you. Even if that's a season where you need to actively heal from your childhood trauma, therapy, whatever you need to do, take that time to prepare yourself in that season before you join your mess to somebody else's life and then mess them up too. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. So in Esther 5, 
She prepared. She was preparing. And then there was that season of harvest, and that's the fall season. That's the season of reaping. So in Esther 7, she eventually petitioned the king. But before she could petition to the king, she had to prepare to address the king. So she was having feast. She was preparing on how to speak to the king, how to present herself to the king. She sought God. She fasted because she not only was going to the king for her, she was going for her, the nation. She, was, she had a nation. She had a responsibility. How did she get to that place of contentment? She began to understand her role as a queen, that it was bigger than her. It was bigger than her. It was bigger than her. She had a nation. A nation's deliverance was resting on her. Ooh, Jesus. Think about your children. Who you raising? Who you raising? Who's in your house? What business endeavors did God give you? And he's, he's wanting you to go ahead and move on that. As, as you said your yes, as you begin to prepare, and then you can reap a harvest. Amen. She began to understand her role as a queen. She understood that it was much bigger than her. You will get to a place in the harvest as you move through this season of planting and as you move through the season of growth, you will get to your harvest. You will get there. We will get there. We will get there. That baby that Deshaun was pushing down the hall, now he can go to sleep on his own. <laughs> I, I was up there, why you taking my baby? Lord have mercy. But there are seasons in life. Nothing in life is guaranteed. It's the promises of God and his word. I didn't really touch on the winter season. Go ahead and stand to your feet. I made this quick. I didn't want to get to you long. I hope you got some meat out of that. But we got some seasons. We have our season of seed planting in spring. That's the season where you're going to say yes to God. We have our season of growth in summer. That's when you're learning and preparing and you're getting mentored. You're growing. You're adding. And the season of fall is the season of reaping. Esther 7 and 2 talked about when she went to the king and she was granted the petition. Why was she granted that petition? Because she prepared. Now, we didn't touch much on the winter season today, but there are some seasons of challenges that we face. That winter season. Those seasons can be challenging. We can give up, we can quit, we can lose faith, we can lose heart. But in those winter seasons, we, ha and we, we might even question God in those seasons, wondering, why is this happening to me? Why I got to go through this? Why did they leave? Why did I lose my job? But unemployment, too, is for a season. It's for a season. Life can be just straight jacking us up. It can be from a move. It can be from loneliness, depression, death, a job change. Kids acting a fool. Your spouse went left. You all alone. We know God knows all. And we know we may not even feel equipped to make it through that winter season. But we have to understand and trust and know that we know a ruler that does. Right? Give him some on that. That's, that's good. We know a God that can carry us through those winter seasons. His name is Abba Father. He is our redeemer. He is a way maker. He holds all power in his hands. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. He knows the plans for our life. He says, according to Jeremiah 29 and 11, I have, and I know the plans I have for you, each of you, and me too. I'm a part of y'all of good and not of evil. In every season, allow God to strengthen you. 2 Corinthians reminds us that his strength is made perfect in our weakness. Them winter seasons can be tough. Pull on some strength. But God is right there. He is a way maker. He is the great ruler. He is the great I am in those winter seasons for you. Understand and know 
that God sees and he knows all. His strength is made perfect when we're weak and when we don't understand that winter season because that season is going to change. But I want to encourage your heart today. Answer the call. Discern the season that you're in. Choose to fulfill the seasons in your life. When you choose, submit to that season wholeheartedly. Oftentimes when you say yes, it can put you in a lonely place. I've been there, and sometimes I'm still there. Especially in a leadership role on your job, you, you, ain't, you ain't with your subordinates. You can't go to lunch with them because you got to lead them. You got to walk different. And when God's hand is on your life, you got to move different because he said we are a peculiar people and we're chosen. So we can't move like them. Our swag is different. For real, it really is. Because even when you don't open up your mouth and tell somebody you're a believer, they already know. I don't tell nobody. They just be knowing. Slide in and want to shut the door and say a prayer. I'm like, how you know? They know because they're watching you. They're looking at you because your swag is different. So don't be afraid of that. Answer your call and answer. There is a yes that God is waiting on in your spring season. So you can get to your summer season and then you can get to your harvest. Yes, it can be a lonely place. However, there is it's, it's more rewarding being in the will of God. Because I really do want him to say, well done. Okay, what did you do? Well done. You completed that? I allocated some time for you. So that seven-month-old that just got killed in the drive-by, he allocated some time for her. There was something she had to do for her family at seven months old. There is nothing like experiencing the peace of God and pleasing the heart of the Father. Nothing like it. I rode by myself, if it takes for me, pleasing the heart of the Father. It's all right. I don't care if don't nobody like me. It's okay. I'm, I'm over 40 now, so you know it don't matter no more. I am a redeemed people pleaser, for real. The Lord healed me from that root of rejection because that's where it came from. The last scripture I have is Ecclesiastes 13 and 11. We are reminded that he made everything beautiful in its time. Invite God into every season of your life today. Today. Can we give God a hand clap of praise right there? Pastor, Pastor Rod, Lady Dez, Lady Tanya, Pastor Bell, thank you for the opportunity, sir. God bless you. Thank you for the opportunity. God bless you. Thank you all for the opportunity for watching me grow in front of you. <laughs> Give God a hand clap of praise right here. He's worthy. Lord, I pray that you seal this word. Seal this word for your people. Lord God, that we can discern the season that we're in, that we won't miss the timing, that we will be synchronized and syncopated on your clock and your timetable, that we move with you, oh God, that we give you a bona fide, solidified yes. Lord God, whether we fear for or not, that we tell you yes, God, that we yield our hearts to you, Father. Lord God, without hindrance or restraint, that we give it all over to you, Father God, that we may experience the seasons, oh God, in you of answering your call, Lord God, to where we can get to the place of growth and where we can get to the place of receiving the harvest. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for worshiping with us today. And we thank you for donating to One Church ATL through our giving. We look forward to seeing you here next Sunday at 10 a.m. in person at our Marietta location or right here on our social media page. We love you and look forward to seeing you next Sunday. Thank you for tuning in to our live One Church ATL broadcast. 
One Church ATL continues to be actively involved with spreading the gospel and impacting lives in our local community. Because of your continued financial support, we've been able to support our first responders and agencies directly involved with supplying resources to those in need. Our ministry has partnered with food distribution centers to assist with the immediate needs of our community, and we've been able to address needs right here within the body of Christ. Your continued support is appreciated as we spread the gospel of the kingdom through giving. On behalf of One Church ATL, we want to say thank you for giving. We pray your resources continue to be blessed.